Before we get started, I want to quickly give you a heads up about what Vite is. Vite is a financial wellness platform where our sole objective is to help every single individual have clarity before they take a financial decisions. What is lacking today is that we end up taking these decisions left, right and center, but we don't know why we are taking them and we end up regretting them. And that's something that we don't want any of our customers to feel. And we have a team of experts along with the algorithm which will recommend suggestions to individuals so that they can take smart financial decisions, not just for today, but also keeping the future in mind. So please do download the app from the iOS or Android Play Store and do try it out and share your thoughts on the comments below or any, on any of our social media platforms. So coming back to the concept of how did Sapiens come up with the concept of money? It's a very important concept mainly because when we, when our research team was working on it, especially Dinesh who was working on it, um, he took, he was so engulfed in it that he loved the whole concept. And that's mainly because we end up using this day in and day out and we still don't know how it came into existence. We know, we probably would know how Tesla has come into the market, but we still aren't really completely sure of how the money that is required to buy that Tesla came into existence, right? So that's where uh, this particular concept or this topic makes a lot more sense to be uh, reciprocated to all of you who are listening. So let's get started. So if you think about it, every single species out there, right, there's so many of them, every single species has a scientific, scientific name attached to them. Right. For example, our beloved dogs, which we love them dearly. So they are called dogs. Scientific name is nothing but Canis familiaris. Right. Similarly, cats are called Felis cactus. Right. And us humans, we are called Homo sapiens. Right. The last one is something that we would have heard because a topic has sapiens on it. But at the same time, most of us would have had the opportunity to read this book called Homo Sapiens, which is an amazing book and a must read that I would recommend or any of our team members would recommend to you, um, to you for you to try reading it. Now, coming into the concept of humans. So over the years, there were so many species, but how did hum humans continue to survive? Right. Uh, there's always this concept of what we know, like most of us know this concept, which is nothing but we came from apes, right? But then why did, why did apes start evolving? But then there are some of these apes who stopped and remained as animals like monkeys, whereas the others evolved to become humans, right? So this is something that you need to jump into a little bit more deeper and that's what I would love for you to look into. So if you look at this particular image on your screen, you will understand that we all had a common ancestor, which is more or less like the grandmother. Uh, we had a common grandmother, if I have to say in a very simple term. Uh, the grandmother had two kids, right? One turned out to be on track to becoming humans, whereas the other turned out to be the monkeys and the other animals down that track, right? So what you need to understand that this bifurcation happened millions of years before. And when this track changed and when humans started forming, you need to understand that we are not the only species of humans that were existent in this uh, world, right? There were other categories like Homo sapiens were one, which is who we, our ancestors are called Homo sapiens, but there are also Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Homo neanderthals. These are all different types of species which were existent, but the only ones which survived were Homo sapiens. Now, the immediate question that you should have, like a follow up for what I just said on the comments, if you want to, you can add them. If you have any other comments, you should, uh, is that how did Homo sapiens actually survive? Right. And the true answer is nothing but money. Uh, and it's, it's a little funny because we all say that money kind of runs the world now. And back then, or at least the concept of money played a very major role in Homo sapiens actually surviving. Right. I mean, there are other reasons as well, but one of the major reasons was this. So now let's jump into that particular concept. Right. Let's take the clan of Homo sapiens. So Homo sapiens used to live as a small group 
a group which was very interdependent to each other mainly because each and every one of them were was a specialist right and this group their behavior was that they will go to a particular location they will use up all the resources for example they would hunt they would forge all the um e trees that they could find from the location that they're at and once it's depleted once it's done they move on to the next location right now when it comes to this behavior what they truly believed in is a trust system of exchanging services to services which means if if one homo sapien was hunting then the other one was a specialist in making weapons whereas the other one was great at making herbs which would help them heal so what happened is the hunter would ask for weapons from the weapon person the weapon person will be like whatever you're hunting you have to give it back to me because it's my weapons and when the hunter goes through some kind of a medical emergency while he's on the field hunting he would go to the person who is a specialist in herbs to make sure that he is revived right and this is how that system worked right and within the system there was also some level of trade the early form of trade was nothing but if one clan was living near the mountains or on the mountains and the other clan was near the ocean the ocean clan would trade fishes in exchange for the herbs that they find in the bottom in the foothills of the mountains right so this was happening but within the clan it was just an exchange right like a verbal ag agreement or some level of trust that goes on saying that if i do this for you you have to do this for me right now what happened is this is a the tale when it was before the agricultural revolution but after agricultural revolution things actually changed drastically and it's amazing to see this change happen so for example if you all remember or if you remember your um history books back in school you would have learned about indus valley where people started settling there because there was water they could like grow plants etc etc so when they learned how to cultivate and grow plants and make their own food what people started doing is they started staying in one place and the small clan started becoming a village the village started becoming like a kingdom and it became huge it was not the same small clan that it used to be now what happened is there was a sense of fear that what if i am trading or what if i'm believing a stranger and what if the stranger does not fulfill his commitment right and this is where there was a heavy need for a common system to play its role and that's where the barter system kind of came into existence right where goods were exchanged goods and services were exchanged between one person to another for other things for example i can give you a quick example here so let's just say there was a farmer on the hill who was growing apples and there was a another individual who was on the foothills who was making shoes or who was like a cobbler right now when the farmer is working super hard he is his shoes are worn out now so now what he has to do is he has to go down to the foothill speak to the cobbler and the cobbler would demand saying that i need two two baskets of apples in exchange for the shoes that i'm going to give you right this was uh, this is probably a good case scenario of an example but now let's just say um there's a worst case scenario where this cobbler already got two or three baskets of apples from another farmer from somewhere else right and um now this farmer who we are talking about from the earlier story comes down and the cobbler does not want the same apples even though the cobbler knows that these apples are much more juicier right so this is where this system of barter system started to kind of cripple and fall down now there was a serious problem in this barter system mainly because the farmer had to remember all the exchange rates in a way i'm going i'm using a very technical term here which is nothing but how many apples or how many baskets of apples as he need to give the medical practitioner that he has to go to or the cobbler or the let's just say a lawyer right so this became very difficult for them to remember and vice versa right so now now let's take another example of if the cobbler himself who has like three baskets of apples goes to a lawyer for some legal help and the lawyer says that hey i don't want your apples because i don't like apples then what does he do right or he says that i already have shoes what will he do so this became a very serious problem and that's where this whole barter system started to fall apart and it's a very common problem that we could understand and i'm telling you this problem was very serious because 
after so many years of introduction of money in the Soviet Union uh, back in the days, which is like recent past, not, not even pre prehistoric times, they wanted to get rid of money as a concept completely. And they had this whole like establishment set up because that was the second stage when individuals couldn't do it. There was a common establishment like a trading like a trading unit where they would bring items saying that, okay, the farmer would bring like 40 bags of apples and give it there. And then the whoever wants to give fishes, they'll give it there. So they'll take exchange. So what happened in the system, what went wrong in the system is people started giving very little and started taking more, right? Because everyone's unit of saying, okay, my apples are the juiciest or my fish is the most clean and freshest one, which you could find in the entire ocean. Right? These kind of terms started creating a lot of confusion and started creating issues or showed gaps within this barter system. Right? And that's when this whole concept of money started to jump in or creep in. So the concept of money was a very interesting revolution, um, mainly because most of the revolution, like agricultural revolution, the industrial revolution, they were all a technical breakthrough. Right? Except that concept of money or the money, the introduction of money into this economy or into the world was a mental revolution. And why? Because let's just take this 100 rupees note and this 10 rupees coin, right? To be honest, there is, even though there is value now, but in reality, there's no value, right? These are just ways in which we can mark or value something else. For example, if I'm going and taking this laptop or this camera, right, or my shirt, then if I'm going and giving it to someone, they have to have a common unit of value. And that's the reason why money kind of came into existence, right? I'm going to keep this back down, but we're going to talk more about what's inside this because it's very interesting. And it's interesting because some, some words of some texts will never change and it'll always be used forever and something that is written on this is quite similar to that right now let us go further into the different types of money mainly because there were so many forms in which money was denoted right uh, there was a brief period of time where salt was used then there were grains used right and then the most of the time for 4000 years around 4000 years in south asia like china and in africa cowrie shells were used and most of us who are watching we would have seen this in uh, these astrologers hands where they try to do the reading it those are the same things but at some point these were like va like unit of money like people gave these shells to buy some products because it was a common unit of money at that point of time so that's very important for us to know that even though all these money concepts did come in and the the notes and the coins are available in the physical format, just like how the grains are available. But even then, when you look at a study in 2004, right, the total money in the world was 60 trillion, 60 trillion dollars. But the number of coins and notes that were out there in circulation was only 6 trillion. And now the interesting thing that you ought to know is in 2004, this was the case. This is when UPI and most of the modern payment services were not there. Now, most of that is already gone in. Like recently, um, there was a news that UPI hit record levels of transactions that it was able to do through its framework or platform, right? So these, this is very important because the, now the money is completely digital, right? It's gone to an extent where money has other value or other names to it, like cryptocurrency and other things, which we're not going to dump into. This is another topic for that. But you need to understand that people are now living in a money economy. And why are they living in a money economy? Because every single individual wants money because every other individual wants money, right? And this is, the, this is very, very important for us to remember. All right. So now how does this entire thing work? Because from a barter system, it moved into like a common denomination called money. How does how did all of this work? Uh, because earlier it was just trust. Trust was the only raw material that was used to denote how you're going to work. Right. But now how it works is it's still trust. But it's it has a very interesting saying, which I would lo love for you all to uh, hear about. Uh, the whole 
exchange of money worked mainly because of this one saying why I believe in this piece of note or this coin is mainly because you believe in them and why do you believe in this because I believe in this and then why we all believe in this is because our government believes in this and they demand it right because the government got involved and they started making changes they said that the common unit that you have to use in India will be rupees and if you remember there are other coins which are quite similar like people say that USD can be used anywhere in the world right because that's something that the legal system or the years of economic and political changes that were going through kind of instilled this behavior in us so that we started trusting the concept of money so that's very important for us to remember now jumping into the history right the first ever known money was during the sumerian time period of 3000 bc right which is before christ and it was nothing but wheat or otherwise another alternate or another family of wheat item is called barley money right uh, but what happened here is people started giving barley as the unit of money to get some services or product but the households which or household the individual was collecting it was looking at this as not as money but as their daily staple item in their household so they started using this to cook they started using this to make other food items so whatever was left out was used as money which became difficult for them right so that is when it moved away from that into a metal which is silver shekel this was doing during the mesopotamia time period and uh, for people who watch discovery channel this is one word that they love using sometimes i feel like they overuse it but uh, during this time what happened was this is still not a coin even though it looks circular it is not like a coin that we see on on the screen now it's not like that it's nothing but people started denoting this to be the amount of weight of silver it was like people would say that let's just say back then if, a, if there's a police penalty or a legal penalty they would be like give me 150 grams of silver right and the individual has to give these coins or these silver denominated values to the person who's requesting for it now the first ever known coin which is the great 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 i don't know how many great father or grandmother of this coin is the lydia coin right this is the first ever known coin because this is the first coin which instilled like a mudra like mudra is nothing but a stamp right of the king the king's symbol was uh, test like was marked on top of it this mark testified like two things nothing but this metal is very precious because it has the mark and also that the authority who is issuing this coin guarantees the value of this coin and the con like the guarantee of this coin having certain value in the market right and that's the reason why lydia coins were the first ones which came into existence and in this if you see the text or the belief that were there in the scriptures back then is that i the king so and so give you my personal word that this metal disc which is not but nothing but the coin contains exactly five grams of gold right and if you see our own hundred rupees note or any of the note that you have at home you can notice that it says i promise to pay the bearer the sum of 100 rupees and the governor of rbi has put a signature which is his mark here right apart from all the other marks that we have on this piece of note right now the interesting fact is that during the time there were so many people who were trying to forge this mark on on these coins because forgery is not something that started recently uh, it's not something that I'm, 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 I hope most of us know about uh, counterfeit note printing and all that before the series Farzi came out so this happened way back in the time where uh, the British Royal Mint Right? at that time the person who you see here is none other than Isaac Newton so what he did was he was a warden of the Royal Mint of London and he executed over 20-25 people right just because they were actually counterfeiting these coins with the mark 
so that they can start using it and bring value to the metal that we're using right so this and they were actually hung to death right so that's something that you have to remember it was that serious not now even back then right now a question time why is money called money does anyone know why it is called money it is an interesting note i'm going to quickly let you guys answer on the comments below and if you have any other thought process or any other pointers because some of you who are watching might already know a lot about economics and the world of uh finance and if you think there are some interesting pointers that the rest of the audience would like to hear please do drop a note so that we can also add it in our next session or we can also append it in our conversation as a additional piece now talking about why is money called money is because of this roman god called juno moneta right so this has nothing to do juno this particular coin that the romans made was not the first coin lydia was the first coin but the romans at that point of time was a very powerful kingdom and the entire world trusted in them because they were such a powerful influence in the entire world because they kept like conquering continents on top of continents right and if you see the reason why it was moneta is because the place where they were printing or marking these coins right next to that there was a roman god juno moneta's temple or a shrine because of that they started putting the name as moneta from moneta it turned into money right so that's the history behind the name money now you need to understand that even though the years passed away the influence of the roman empires or the roman dynasty had even still now it holds good in places like iran and other places especially in the middle east mainly because back then the roman empire's currency was called dinari and it was the single monetary system why because they were so influential that all the other countries or all the other dynasties at that point of time were ready to recognize this as a common system of payment right just like how today we say that the us is very powerful similarly back then it was the roman currency that had a lot of power and the power still exists in terms of the name not not the value if you go show this people are not going to give you um like 10 baskets of apple but still i mean if you have it it's priceless by the way uh but still um the whole name dinari today still exists the name it's called dina dinar right if you remember there are these dinars in iran and other places their coins are called dinars even today right so that's how powerful it was now coming to a conclusion of this entire concept right money ends up being a very very powerful source and why because it is the only thing that is open minded way beyond the political influence way beyond uh the human relationship the trust everything else it ends up being the only trust system created by human that can bridge any kind of cultural gap if you think about it right like how we say that if you have thousands and thousands of like arguments in the end of the day money speaks right so that's very important and with that i will say that homo sapiens cracked this mystery of how to survive only because they understood how to use make these coins how to use them practically and how to do trade so today every single trade that's happening is because of all these small small decisions that were made years ago and let's not forget that there was also a lot of political influence that played a major role over these years to make to give value to these coins or give value to the monetary system that we currently have so if you love this particular topic and if you want more such topics please do drop comment in the comment box and also hit the like button and subscribe to our channels for more interactive and fun topics that we can do on a regular basis thank you